All right, guys, you may remember this one. This is a 2007 Club Car Precedent. This one here is having the same issue it did before with the cylinder basically filling up with oil. Or I'm sorry, filling up with gasoline. The fuel pump may be falling apart. All right, let's get the seat off and start checking it out and see what's going on. All right, so let's pull the dipstick. Oh yeah, I can see the oil. I'm not even gonna look at the dipstick. I can see the gasoline already in the dipstick too. Yeah, I can see it right at the very bottom. So, let me do this. I don't know if this is going to... I know I'm not going to be able to show you guys that, but... Alright, so we got fuel right here, and this is the top of the dipstick tube, so there's that much dipstick sticking out of the engine. So that's quite a bit of... <laughs> that's quite a bit of fuel inside the thing here. So this is the cart here. I don't know if you remember, I added the second fuel filter down here, but this fuel filter is on backwards. We have to switch that around. So you can see here's this fuel filter. This is the main one on the cart. And then the one down below down here, that's when I added and uh, he's installed it backwards. So we'll have to switch that around, but we got to take it all apart anyway to get the carburetor out. Oh yeah, crunchy. that oil is almost clear because it's mostly gasoline. This engine has definitely seen better days. Alright, so we'll just let that drip. So some of you guys have been wondering which gloves I've been using. These uh, Black Diamond, or I'm sorry, these Black Advance IF63s diamond gloves, powder-free textured nitro examination gloves. These seem to be pretty good. I like these gloves. They're size large. I've, you can see I've already gone through quite a bit of the box. These seem to work pretty good. I like them. They go on easy. They don't rip as easily as some of the other gloves do that I, I've been trying. For example, I got this pair, this set of gloves here. These are orange nitro powder free gloves, heavy, du heavy texture, extra thick by catch. They're terrible. They're hard to put on. So I have one on here. Okay, now my hands are dry. They're clean. There's nothing sticky on them. They're not sweaty. But look at this. I gotta, I gotta like pull them so tight and then they rip. So what's the point? These don't go on very easily, and I don't like these gloves. These will be more. These orange ones will be more or less like the the backups when I'm out. And they're not the same brand as the other orange gloves, which you can find the link to the original orange gloves I was using down in the description. Well, look at that. The spark plug is bone dry. I'm gonna roll this over by hand because I wonder if there's any. No, there's no fuel in the cylinder. Okay, so that's good. Well, and the spark plug's in good shape too. It's in, it's the right color. It's not carboned up. BPR 5ES. I'd be running a 2ES. BPR 2ES. Oh, here, thunder. It is humid as hell today. All right, so we don't have to change the plug. The cylinder's not wet, so that's good. Okay, this guy actually found his original repair video on, on my channel, which I thought was kind of neat. Let's check this air filter out. Okay, that looks all right. Yeah, so I think he said he replaced that as well, because that's not my, that's not my part number. Typically with the air filter, if they're clean, and you know, if you, can you know do this and it doesn't make a cloud then I leave them I don't change them out that's just wasteful to do that uh, but if they if any bit of dust comes shaking out of it or I know the cart is getting heavy use then I'll end up changing it club car this was a terrible ass design look how they put this in here 
you can't even, like all the wiring and everything's in the way, so you can't even put the filter cover back on. Wires get caught in the cover. Ay -ay -ay. Now we gotta pull the carburetor. I have to change the direction of that fuel filter down here, this one. The cone of the filter itself is supposed to point towards the fuel source. See how that cone points towards the gas tank? Well, he has this one installed backwards. I don't know if you can see this. I mean, it'll work, but it won't work properly. Because you want all the contaminations to be caught on the outside of the filter so you can see it. This one I'm going to change because now if there is any contaminations on the inside of the filter, they'll go through back into the carburetor and we'll be back into that same situation. So we have to replace this fuel filter at the least. And this crossbar is right in the way. I'm sure there could have been other ways of doing that. This is the anti-tamper cover. All right, so we can let this, actually let's change this now. Now we'll change this last. I got the drain pan down there, so we'll let this gas just run. The fuel line itself is shut off, so I'm not too worried about it. Here, look at this. I gotta show you this. This is this was ingenious, and I mean this sarcastically. All right, here's our carb. Back in here is a 10 millimeter nut we need to get to to remove the carburetor. Look at this. That's how you gotta get in here. You can't even get in here with a wrench because the gas tank's on the way. Another engineer. Oh, it'll look good on paper. Engineer slash designer, let me say that, because it's not always the engineer's fault, it's not always the designer's fault, it's so it's, I'm gonna blame you both. So, any of you guys out there are engineers or designers of any sort, of anything, that design stuff for anything that needs to be repaired or worked on on a regular basis, or has the ability to be worked on such as this, why don't you talk to some mechanics that actually work on these things? For a living and take some pointers off of them otherwise you're gonna piss us off we're just gonna lift it up out of the way and move it like so I've talked to a few engineers and designers about stuff that I don't like that they do and they've told me many times you know hey we don't control this and I say I understand that you guys don't have control over a lot of stuff but you know what don't be making stupid designs that makes it difficult for people like us to work on it. See, look at this. The carburetor hits the fuel tank and you can't get it out without jacking up the front of the engine. But back to my story, I drive a 2013 F250 with the Power Stroke diesel. And I'm sure it's the same on the gas model too, but in order to change the headlights, you have to take basically the whole front of the truck apart. Now, what stupid asshole designed that? Okay, so in order to get this carburetor out, we're gonna slide this floor jack under here. We have to raise the engine tray just a little and just enough to, if it, if it goes, there we go. Okay, so we have to raise that up just enough so we can get this carburetor to clear the fuel tank, just like that. Yeah, now that I took, yeah, see, I had to raise that up. So, stupid work that you need to do to do stupid tasks. This thing is kind of like puking out a little bit, which is fine. Don't lose that washer. Oh, yeah. That's our problem. It's not so much that there's Water? And the, the debris in the bottom? The debris? Yeah, I know it's debris, but I'm just saying. But that crap there is what's getting into the carburetor and causing all kinds of problems here. 
I wonder if the fuel pump is falling apart. I think what we'll do is we'll pull the fuel pump out after we clean the carburetor and get it back together. And we'll see what's going on inside. We'll check the diaphragms because he may need a fuel pump and that may solve the problem. But we got to get this apart and clean no matter what. We got our pin. Oh, this is interesting. You can kind of see that little filter tippy thing there. That, you know, this is going to be almost next to impossible to show you. But you see that black squiggly line right there? That was stuck to the tip of the float valve. Whatever it is, is getting past the filters and into the carburetor causing these issues here. Uh, we're going to pull the fuel pump off and we're going to see what the story is with it. After we disassemble this. Clean it and put it back together. Is that coming out? Okay, yeah. I think I have to get a new screwdriver. These, uh... These are just not... cutting it here. Come on, just come out. I'll take it all apart first and then we will clean it and start assembling it as we put it back together. Or I'm sorry, we'll clean it as we're putting it back together. And this is only a, this Kawasaki motor is just only, is the only engine that I have ever experienced that does this. So there's the externals of the carburetor cleaned. What I would like to do is put this So I've been reading some of your guys comments and feedback about how you like my videos and how you like that I talk while I'm cleaning these things. So I've decided I'm going to try a couple of things here and I want to get your feedback on it as well. So as I'm making videos and I'm cleaning a carburetor such as this one, I can talk about multiple things that while I'm cleaning the carburetor I can talk about what I'm doing like right now I'm just ooh that's blocked actually no it's not that is not a that is not a port that allows flowing fuel oops I think I have that mesh screen there see that's what I was saying like in my last video or one of my previous videos I was talking about how this drain pan I keep clean because I like using it to clean carburetors on because it has such a nice area and it has this mesh screen right here to collect and grab large objects so they don't go down into the oil. Not that it matters anyway because if, even, if, even if there's something that gets down in there because there's dirt in this oil right now and big chunks of it from the bottom of this golf cart. Even with that, like that, it doesn't matter because I filter down to 100 microns anyway before they go into the storage barrels. Ooh. Oh, a little bit on the camera. It's okay. So back to what I was originally saying here. <clears throat> you know, I could talk about what I'm doing and, and or really, other stuff. What other stuff? I don't know. Probably, you know, I, you guys seem to like to hear my opinions on uh, other brands and everything, and, which is good because I, I dislike something about every brand. But having said that, I also like a lot of things about every brand. So there's a little bit more Except for EasyGo. I just don't like EasyGo's. 
They used to be my go-to until they came out with that. So they put that Kawasaki motor in their carts, and I think they started that like 2014, 16, somewhere in there in the, in the I don't know, or maybe it was before that, because I've seen 2010 RXVs, so it could be before that, but whenever they started using that Kawasaki engine, which is basically the same engine, almost the same engine that's in the club car. Uh, ever since they started using that motor is when I started to show my dislike for them. Actually, no, that's a lie. I started disliking EasyGo when they stopped using the Robin engine, the Subaru motor, with the dual two-cylinder two Robin engine. And when they started cheapening that up, that was when they went to the all-aluminum head with the aluminum exhaust manifold. That's when I really started to find dislikes for because they... Easy go, I guess, apparently was sued or something for people tampering with their things and they got, somebody got hurt. So they said, okay, we're going to make it really difficult for you to adjust the governor and tamper with it. From what I understand, I could be wrong. I never really did any research on it because I really, quite honestly, I can care less. I... I'm an advocate for leaving the governor alone on a golf cart. I don't like when people screw around with them because, one, most importantly, you can get hurt or you can hurt somebody. Two, you can blow the motor up if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, yeah, you want to go fast on a golf cart? We'll do it right. Put a gear set in. Put a severe duty clutch on. A severe duty belt. Bigger tires and wheels. Or something. Modify the cart in that fashion. Don't be screwing around with that governor. It's there to protect the engine and you. The governor is there to protect stupid. Well, unfortunately, a lot of things are there to protect stupid, and some people just don't care. Or don't know better. If you don't know better, that's one thing. But if you do it blatantly out of disregard for yourself and other people, then you're an idiot. That's my opinion, and I'm going to stick to it. I don't care if you like it. If you do, great. If not, whatever. You don't have to be on my channel then. Okay, carburetor is rebuilt. Well, cleaned and put back together. I don't consider that a rebuild. That's just the cleaning. Just wipe off this soot in here. So, alright, I'm going to pull the fuel pump off now. I'll show you that, and then we'll take it apart. We'll see what's going on inside. I'm probably going to have to put a pump on it. And if you couldn't have guessed where the fuel pump is... So it's right down here. This is your full fuel pump. And of course, some genius thought that torques were a good idea. T25. Okay, so for those of you that want to know what size that is, that is a T25. These are only screwed into the plastic tub, so they should just unscrew very easily. I'm going to disconnect the choke button. So that way I can lift this up and out. Get some pliers. Oh, I'm not concerned with the fuel dribbling back into the tank because I have the fuel shut off, turned off. Not concerned with the fuel dripping anywhere because I do have the I have the um, another drain pan under the cart. Now this bottom line here, this is the pump line. This is the line that comes off the bottom of the motor. The pulse line. I'm just gonna let that drop down and then straight out. Okay, there's the fuel pump. Let's get it over to the drain pan. All right, so here's the fuel pump. And you can see the fuel flow direction by these arrows. So this is the inlet, this is the outlet, and this is the pulse line. That's the line that you hook up to the crankcase. Ooh, these screws are not tight. Look at that. That's that is not tight at all. That's barely... That could be our problem right there. Well, one of our problems. And these really aren't rebuildable. I mean, you can get the diaphragms and the gaskets and all that stuff for them. 
But for what they cost, you're just better off buying another one because you're only going to be saving a little bit of time or a little bit of money. You're not going to be saving any time. You're going to gain a lot of frustration and aggravation, that's for sure. All right, so we got the bottom half off. Oh, yeah, look at all the debris in there. Look at all that junk. I don't know if you can see that or not. See the, the chunks of dirt on the inside of that diaphragm? See if we can get this to separate. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, there's there's all kinds of... It's probably not going to show up on camera, but I can see all kinds of debris. I peel this apart. Yeah, I've got all the oil. That's from the pulse. So I, we're going to just replace the fuel pump because there's all kinds of crap in here anyway. And now that it's been taken apart, it'll never go back together the same. It's still, I could clean it out ten times and it still may never fully work correctly, so we're just going to replace it and be done with it because that's just the easiest thing to do. And it's it'll save a whole boatload of aggravation. FP002, uh, you can see it's, exact, it's an exact replacement. The bottom tube is the pump. This one is our feed and this one is our, or I'm sorry, this is our out and this is our in. Uh, I'm also going to change the fuel filters. I know he just put these on, but because we're doing a carburetor cleaning, it's one of my requirements. Otherwise, it's not going to be a complete, it's only going to be like a half fast job. So we're going to change them. Hopefully you can see the direction of fuel flow with that arrow. Not a fan of these squeeze clamps either, but it is what it is. Now I'll take our, put that on there. That there. All right, so what we'll do is slip this on. Here. In case you're wondering, this ground wire that's going to the fuel tank is for the... Some models are equipped with the fuel sender for gas gauge, fuel gauge, and that's just part of that system, so that's why that's there. In case you were wondering why this wire is in my way. Okay. All right, so we have our inlet line. The pulsar line is hooked up. I'm going to hook the choke back up. Some people don't even know the choke is there because it blends right into the kick plate. All right, so here's the carb. This is going to be a really close, up close and personal shot here. All right, so I'm going to pull that down out of the way. That's my air intake. We're going to take the carb. Oh, don't forget, I still have the engine jacked up a little bit so we can actually do this because otherwise we wouldn't be able to. Um, looks like the spring fell off for that, so I gotta hook that up. I gotta find it now. I hope you guys don't have any phobias about <laughs> metal on metal. I know some people cannot stand the sound of metal on metal. I'll be sure to put the warning in. Okay, so now we got the spring reinstalled. That stuff is good there. The throttle's reconnected. Choke has nothing to do with this because on club cars they don't have the choke on the the carburetor anyway. It's on the air intake side, which works. I mean, it does the same exact thing. It's one less moving part. I have to give them that. 10 millimeter nuts. So here's a trick I use. If I can't get that to stay in there, if I'm having a hard time getting a, a nut to start like in a tight, tight spot like this, I'll take a screw, screwdriver 
and I will put the nut on the bolt that it's got to go to, hopefully, anyway, and then I'll try to get it started. And then once it's, it's started, I can move the screwdriver out of the way. It's not so difficult if you take the air hose off, but it is difficult to get the air hose off, so see where this one, the air hose is actually holding the nut in place for me. You don't need to reef these down too tight, but tight enough to where they don't leak or come loose. Take our fuel line. Try to get it ahead of that rib that's in there on the, the barb for the carburetor so it doesn't slip off. And that, put the fuel filter in place on this end. Okay, that's tight. Alright, so I got the oil drain plug on, pull the dipstick out, put a little bit of oil on the oil ring, the O-ring. Always lubricate the O-ring on the oil filter. Alright, let's see what we can do here. I have to get in like this. There we go. There's like no room here to do any of this stuff the shifter cable is in the way. Engine is now full of oil. Let's fire it up now, see what happens. Put it in service mode. Oh, it's got a weak battery. Oh, okay, the fuel system is actually priming itself, so that's good. They typically don't do that. All right, now you hear that clanking noise is gone? So we know the fuel system has, or I'm sorry, the oil has, uh, So the cart runs, it actually is running really good. So and we were able to see a result why there was fuel in the oil or the crankcase. So it was good that I was actually able to catch that and show that to you to, so you can see what is causing it so that it's not just like a fluky thing. It is actually debris in the fuel system that's making it pass the filters, getting into the carburetor and blocking the carb up and actually causing it to stick open, which is not good. And it's very, it's gonna be very exaggerated with this cart because as you can see, the carburetor is basically level with the bottom of the fuel tank. So it's gonna pretty much siphon all of that fuel from the tank into the engine and eventually make it into the crankcase. Cause it was, like I showed you in the beginning of the video, it was tall. I mean, it was halfway up the, that tube basically touching the bottom of the cylinder which is you know, not good but you know it is what it is I suppose um, so I'm gonna put the PCB back now that we have adjusted that that hose is sticking on there okay that clamp is back that's in short order let's see what happens See, now that I've taken that off.
So this governor is a bit out of, out of adjustment. That's why you're hearing it start and stop like that, because I'm giving it pedal, but the throttle is actually open before the engine starts. This will be susceptible to backfiring and herky-jerky starts. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm not going to touch it, because if I do, I have to slow it down. So I'm not going to do anything to it. Check our oil here. I know I'm going to have to add some. It was a little low. But at least it's clean. Engine sounds good. Doesn't sound like it's... Actually, the oil is spot on. It's right on the... I know you guys probably can't see that at all. I'll kind of do this. Maybe you can see something. It's right about, it's right there. There's the full word and then it's right there. So we're good. Oil's good. Fuel system's good. Uh, we didn't have to change the spark plug because that was dry, so we don't have to worry about that. So, there you have it guys, a bad fuel pump. A fuel pump full of debris, doesn't matter how many times you pull the carburetor apart. If you got crap in your fuel system somewhere, it's going to make it in and it's going to cause issues. Now, how it made it past that second filter, I don't know. I mean, it might have been something that was lodged in the fuel line and just finally migrated to the carburetor, which is a good strong possibility and is what I think happened. But other than that, this is a result. This card is done. So I want to take this time now to thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Be sure to check the video's description for product links to the things I use every day to bring you these videos and to run my business. Check out my website, Facebook, and Patreon pages. If you have any questions about this particular topic, leave a question down in the comment section down below. All right, guys. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.